territory. Uh, our signatory chief signed in 1874, which started our relationship with the Crown, now with also within the Crown of Canada. So today in 2019, Houses has 4,270 citizens. Uh, we have 900 that live at home. Our home base is an hour and a half east of Regina. Um, since 1996, we've, we, we are what you call a treaty land entitlement nation, meaning that we purchased land that wasn't rightfully given to us on the, per, um, you know, how the land was supposed to be given. So since 1996, Cowses has tripled in size. Today we have 110,000 acres of land. Whose territory was this traditionally? So this one was the Nakoda, the Cree, and the Soto. Okay. So Cowses has all three. Now something about our, our values is we're a very diverse nation. We have four backgrounds in our nation. So we're not just a Cree, but we're Cree Soto. Our signatory chief, his actual name was Kwewezets. But when they uh, wrote down our name, when we settled, they wrote C-O-W-E-S-S-E-S-S. -S -S. Wow. So Kaosis is no name and no language in this world. But <laughs> in the last four generations, we have honored our name, but our original name is Kwewezets, which is Soto for little child, little boy. So. We have the four four different backgrounds and houses. We have Cree, Soto, Nakoda, but we also have Métis. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very proud of our heritage. Uh, today, we're now going into fourth and fifth generation of um, of our Cowboys First Nation people. We fund 95 students that go to university right now. Education is really key for us. But also really key for us is to be innovators. I've been chief from t since 2016, so this original plan wasn't, I wasn't a part of it, I was in university. But people like Councillor Rook, who was once a chief of Cowses, who was one of my mentors, and Jessica was a part of the original here. In 2010-11, um, renewable energy was starting to be talked about more and more. In 2012, Cowses signed a purchase power agreement with SAS Power. Uh, that is our crown corporation in this province. They, they have the monopoly for it. Uh, it was a long time coming. It was the first time a First Nation signed a purchase power agreement directly with a crown corporation. And so in 2016, when I got elected and when Rook got elected, we started to make sure everything in our nation was efficient with what we had, what we can control. One of the things we found out in our purchase power agreement was that we were still had 400 mega kilowatts uh, that we could use. This turbine was producing a little under 700 kilowatts. And so um, Jessica and the team started to assess and in the fall of 2018, we cut the ribbon on our solar panel. Uh, we amended our purchase power agreement, and we are the only site in Canada that holds a battery storage that has a turbine and solar all in the same area. And so I just wanted to leave it at that. I wanted to spend the majority of our time, but one of the things I do want to leave you with is cows is, we're hungry for more. This is just an introduction yeah. to us. We're a very prosperous nation. We're forward thinking. We're really good, true treaty partners, as you want to say. We have our own internal uh, challenges that we're overcoming, but when you come here and visit us, you know, it really gives us that aspiration that we're on the right track. Well, it's an honor for me to be here, for you to think that me being here does anything for you. It's very humbling because we're looking at leadership from Indigenous peoples right across the country on renewables. Mm -hmm. I recently learned that 20% of all renewables, or new renewables in Canada are coming mm -hmm. in First Nations in partnerships mm -hmm. and leadership. Yeah. And you never know that from watching the news media in this country. You would never know Indigenous mm -hmm. leadership was leading us into solar and hydro and wind power. You know you know about these individual cases, mm -hmm. but collectively it's 20%. Mm -hmm. So, and you're really, I know you're leaders in this demonstration of combining the two renewables. Nice. Um, no, yeah. thank you for that. Um, so, you know, and in conclusion, our ancestors always knew how to look after Mother Earth because this land here is our children yet unborn, and that's how cows use a lot of this renewable energy stuff. We know it's not just going to turn off all of the uh, resources that are extracted, but cows wants to play our part in that transition. And so now we're working on other projects. So Jessica will probably speak to it a little bit here. But we have some other projects on the go. Um, anytime you Google First Nation and renewable energy in this country, cows is going to pop up right at the top, and that's something we're very honored for. So with that, I'm just going to hand it over to Rook. I don't know if I missed anything, or if you want to add in. No, it's, it's all good. Just, just one uh, one thing we did that's pretty exciting for, for, for myself and, and, and for our nation is uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've been invited to the uh, World Indigenous mm -hmm. 
uh, economic summit and they want us to to do a presentation on our project. That's cool. Well, I don't know about that. That's I'm in uh, October. 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 Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Good. I know earlier, Rookie, you shared, and maybe you can share it again with our partnership potential with uh, universities and high schools here, the training. I know you are talking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, somewhat. Like that, That's one of our goals is to, to bring this into a, a, a training center, not only for high schools, you know, but catch interest in the younger people in high school and university classes, uh, technical schools where you can learn their, their engineering and stuff here, electrical engineering and uh, turbine maintenance, stuff like that.